Louder with Crowder Studios is protected exclusively by Walther and Hopper. I could have got more. I could have got more. I don't know if I just... I could have got more. Steven, 1,500 people will be filling the University of Michigan Power Center because of your show. Look at them. If I'd have gotten Hill Auditorium, I throw away so many names on a waiting list, you have no idea. If I'd have just pushed for Hill Auditorium... The school would never let you have the Hill Auditorium because of the things you did. I should have pushed harder. You pushed as hard as you could. I know, I know, it's 3,900 seats, but... Maybe if I could have showed them the overflow. This screen. This viewer, these ten boys in their college dorm. Ten more people. It would have been ten more people. This family, watching right now on the Roku. Four more people. We could have booked a second show. We could have built a second show. And I didn't. I didn't build a second show. I could have been healed again. Louder with Crowders, October 25th. Spooktacular at U of M may be sold out. But you can still sign up now for the secret overflow room and the block party. Mug Club secret after party details to follow. Do so much more. Some moves. That's yeah. called the Make Our Third Chairsman. The men, Hodge Twins, incredibly uncomfortable. Right after that, how are you boys? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty sexy, man. <laughs> Put the money cool. away, guys. Uh, <laughs> we have we have Razor Fist on the show today. Boom. Boom. Really nice. excited. We're gonna have Daniel Cormier on. Uh, he had to move last second. We'll have him on, I think, next week. Also with like Jordan Peterson. Yeah. It's gonna be a crazy. Apparently, you can do that when you're the toughest guy in the world. <laughs> yeah. When he can beat you up. Yeah. We say nothing. Uh, what is HodgeTwinsTour.com? Yeah, HodgeTwinsTour.com. And you have yeah. dates coming up soon? Dates. Yeah. We've got plenty of dates in Texas and Florida. They also oh. had half a beer, so, you know, they're a little, oh, they're bit, done. Little, yeah. little bit rough for them. <laughs> That's why uh, my eyes are like this. <laughs> new show open, by the way. And, yes, the U of, yeah. M, uh, U of M show is happening October 25th. You might even Boom. add a second Boom. show, so don't not book it because it's uh, sold yeah, out. Uh, Quarter Black Garrett producing. Uh, thank you, Quarter Black. At G. Morgan Jr., what's the wine of the day? we got tea vine Mixed Blacks. Tea is it tea vine or, mixed or is it wine? Blacks. Mixed Blacks. Is it tea or is tea it wine? Tea vine. Tea vine. See, this is why people think you're affected. Uh, <laughs> question of the day. I thought it was special. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be talking later about today's leftist hate mob. I know that, that every time we use the word mob, the hot ones get jumpy. Yeah. <laughs> Say lynch mob. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you think the heads of the DNC, the media, are just blatantly encouraging, endorsing mob rule now? Or are you still like in the yes. world's we're both parties, yes. man, camp? Is, is, is there really any equivalency at this point? Genuinely, I want to know. Uh, we'll be talking <laughs> about possible. that later. You guys have been pretty safe, though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Everywhere you go, you get recognized. What's funny is, you know, if I get recognized, it's like it's either people really like me or hate yeah. me. With you guys, sometimes it's just a novelty because you're like, oh, two black twins. Yeah. <laughs> We went to, to a taco. I feel like a circus there animal first. right now. <laughs> yeah, we went to, remember, to Torch's Tacos, and I remember the yeah. one guy was a real fan. He was like, oh, man, he mentioned something specific. And then a girl was just like, oh, I know you. Yeah, <laughs> it's always like, that uh, expression. <laughs> yeah, the cream pot twins. No, 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 no. <laughs> Double mint gum, that's you. Sensor bud right off the bat. But the guy was a big fan. I don't remember what he referenced. Okay, listen, leading the news, yeah. um, President Trump's meeting with Kanye West mm. yes. didn't exactly yeah. go as planned. <laughs> Uh, this comes oh. from The Hill, possibly the best quote ever that we've had in this show. <laughs> the rap star launched into a monologue touching on mental health, the prison system, and improving life for African Americans in inner cities. You need to, re it really was a breakdown yeah. uh, if you watch the monologue. It's a shame, too. The two have actually been really excited about the White House sleepover for some time now. La, 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 wait till I see Kanye tonight. I had a dream of a sleepover with Donald. Watch Netflix, maybe eat some tacos. 
He told me it was gonna be so dope though Me grabbing interest by the truth though I wish everybody chill man I ain't one of the Clintons, I ain't have nobody kill man I piss Pelosi off for funsies Make America great in our onesies I don't know what happened there exactly. It seems like, <laughs> see, I, you know what? If that's what it seems like, it that's makes awesome. sense that they 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 went off the rails. Yeah, two peas in a pod, right? I love how when when they were inviting him over, they're like, they're going to talk about manufacturing resurgence, violence, and prisons. And I'm like, you threw manufacturing resurgence in, yeah. and not talk about violence and prisons. <laughs> so it's not like a completely like, yeah, who wants racist popcorn? Agenda. <laughs> exactly. Really? He's like, Kanye yeah. knows a lot about manufacturing. I huh? want popcorn. You want popcorn? Yeah. <laughs> it's just passionate every time. <laughs> yeah. And, and Drake's oh my like, gosh. last name corn, first name pop. Cut. Okay, was that good, my Toronto friends? That work? <laughs> gosh, Drake. I he's a butter soft wait, from Toronto. Wait, wait, wait. Was he the Sprite guy that you used to, in the movies, every yes, single time he, he would do the Sprite yes, thing? Exactly. Oh my gosh. The whitest way to know him. Yes. Was that the Sprite guy? Hey, was that the guy selling the soda pop? All right, another uh, Trump news. Uh, Alec Baldwin claims that ever since he's played Trump, black people... Love me. Hmm. His direct quote. Here's another direct. Wow. He says, I think it's because they're most afraid of Trump. I'm not going to paint every African American person with the same brush, and then he does. But a significant <laughs> number of them are sitting there going, This is going to be bad for black folks. Hmm. Um, <laughs> funny enough, I like uh, Baldwin for his voicemails. I don't give a damn that you're 12 years old or 11 years old, or that you're a child, or that your mother is a thoughtless pain in the ass, or that you're not care about what you do as far as I'm concerned. You have humiliated me. The last time with this phone. I, you know, oh. <laughs> what's funny is he, starts, he blames the daughters for oh the mom's. I mean, that's really not fair. Like, I get the daughters a pain in the ass, but yeah. like, and your mom's a whore. <laughs> Why do you got to throw that in there? You know, apparently, you're rating a 12 year old. <laughs> since playing Trump, black people love him. Hodge twins, you I don't think so. I think it's just because he's cooning. <laughs> Wait, how does a white guy do this? Wait, what? Yeah. He's the first man. He's this. It's amazing. White people are cooling for black folks now. <laughs> <laughs> I got black bad news for like them, uh, Yeah, black people don't like you, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're not big fans of reruns of 30 Rock? That's yeah. not, that's not yeah, a, yeah, a lot of people don't like yeah. Donald Trump because, he's, uh, because they're racist. <laughs> black people are racist. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like your white ass knee. <laughs> But you, get, but you guys yeah. did say, you did tell me that, that some black people are afraid of Trump, you thought. No, they just, they just don't understand him. They don't understand him? He's missing. <laughs> I don't think they really care about him or politics. It, yeah. No, it's the yeah. economy, right? It's, I mean, would, would you say that's true? Like, if they're doing well, they're going to be like, I don't care. Wait a white Trump. Well, or, it, wait a white Trump. Oh, come it, on. It, right? really, it really depends on how um, CNN perceives everything. That's what well, they go off. So. Yeah, okay. Their I, sources are bad. I didn't really th- <laughs> it's not their fault. I didn't really think that black people were watching CNN. Yeah, that's who's watching the black folks. <laughs> Mama used to watch it all the time. Oh, wow. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> she'll watch that. Andy Griffith will come on, and then she look at Red Fox. And then reruns Sanford of and Son, yeah. CNN. Reruns of Shaft. Jeffersons. Yeah. No, not Shaft. She, she was a religious <laughs> woman. <laughs> that's when you guys leave. Just like goes, every goes, stereotype we could possibly. I'm watching out, the right? Jeffersons. Then you leave, and she goes. Shaft. <laughs> uh, here's oh another one about uh, how local government works for you. The Houston City Yay. Council actually found a new loophole to prevent a sex robot brothel mm, from opening. Mm. So let me explain oh. this to you because the story might seem a little tough. The City Council actually expanded its definition of an arcade device, <laughs> okay. which are already barred from operating within 1,500 feet of churches, schools, daycares, parks, residential mm. neighborhoods. So t- let, me cl- let me clarify this. They're actually they're classifying creepy sex robots as arcade machines. Not because hmm. those are apparently easier to regulate. <laughs> oh man! You can crack down on those, which oh. makes sense actually, given when you consider what some people do with the uh, with the. Well, hey, oh, hey, hey, hey! Oh, yeah. yeah. no, 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 hey, come oh, on! Oh. Get out of! Come on! That's enough of the. Yeah. Get up in there, Kevin. Every... Get up in there. There's no respect. Oh, Every day, Kevin. at least twice. Having <laughs> sex with the guy arcade machines. You... I want to go play. That's the last time. That's the last time. <laughs> Those things look so real. You said though. that last that's, time. That's the last time we let him have sex with our arcade machine. Did you guys yeah. ever play the hot shot, like the basketball hot shot deal in the arcades? Forget those games. Right. I want to play the game he was playing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> My time apparently was misplaced. I was really good at that. I should have been good at the other games. Also, is it odd that uh, I have a wall thrown on the desk but use a 2x4 with nails? No, because I don't no. have the liability. I don't want to lose him as a sponsor. Oh, so Speaking yeah. of city councils Twice. and things doing, they're doing weird stuff, uh, Detroit now is... <laughs> there are oh, areas boy. of Detroit being designated as no spanking zones. <laughs> 
What? This comes from Detroit. Yeah. They passed a resolution <laughs> to discourage corporal punishment. That makes sense. By creating hit-free zones in at least 10 public areas with signs that actually <laughs> specify that. So good to see Detroit on, on track towards solutions. Yeah. Hey, exactly. how about and no not shooting not disciplining zones. your children. <laughs> <laughs> mm. No shooting yeah. zones. We're on the right track. Though. Was it? Yeah, let's well, no shooting zones. That'd be a good <laughs> that, would, start. that would be great, right? Yeah. That's what I would have came up with. But I don't yeah. know. Spanking. Here's, here, how about this, Detroit? No spanking? If you have a dad, take it as a win. Let's go with that. <laughs> let's not get picky at this yeah. point. All right, Detroit? Like, yeah. maybe he has a couple too many, comes home, starts swatting. That's fine. He's, you're lucky to have him in your life. <laughs> <laughs> We need more consequences, not less consequences in these situations. Be tan their hide. Yeah. You guys got yeah. weapons. I was just talking about oh, yeah. everybody. Good Lord, you are so uncomfortable around black people. <laughs> what did I say? You guys got whoopings, right? Didn't y'all get whoopings no, when you I was a kid? Him. He starts oh. talking like Steve Harvey. I wouldn't call them whoopings. Those was beatings. <laughs> <laughs> Straight lashes. <laughs> See, I wasn't trying to say that. <laughs> well, you did. <laughs> Daddy give us lashes. <laughs> yeah. Did you actually Five lashes? Bump. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Did they take I'm, out the belt, make you go get your own switch? Oh, the switch See, every, the every time I try to defend you from Gerald sort of assuming something that's stereotypical, that's right. you fulfill it. <laughs> oh. I remember one day as little kids was throwing rocks at cars, uh -oh. and we hit this guy's car, and it was a white man. <laughs> Not, he was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> he goes in and talks to my daddy. I'm running away from daddy for like days. He finally got us. Oh, my God. He said, I'm going to kill you, boy. <laughs> Two states really? away. Yeah, he beat us yeah. bad. He beat us real bad. I blacked out. Oh, man. Woke up. He was still hitting me. <laughs> <laughs> I learned a valuable lesson, though. Don't throw rocks at cars. No, don't throw rocks at a white man's car. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't get caught throwing rocks at cars. That's the real go. lesson. Yeah. yeah I you know, what? I, I did the exact same thing, except it was a, a pudding packs. Well, that's funnier. I used to love them, lob them from atop the bridge. Yeah. And one time a bus driver got out and kicked my friend's ass. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to you, he stopped his route. He just stopped. stopped. He came out and he's like, Hey, franchement, psychologiste, tu vas pas faire ça encore. He's a French Canadian. Man, a little sounds mullet, like a Nazi tail. Canadian. Yeah, he sounds Nazi. That's how French Canadian. My friend, my friend was like, My friend didn't know how to speak French. He's like, Okay, okay, okay. Ah, tabarnak, Claude, c'est pas ça. Okay, I don't even know. What's, I live here, but I've never learned a language. Ah, si, c'est tout fucky. I understand that. <laughs> True story. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, hey, by the way, did everyone know that it was National Coming Out Day? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Was today my day? Uh -huh. If you've been if you've been anywhere, is this that, oh, that good makes sense goodness. when you're I, I'm engaged to a woman. Yeah. Now it makes sense. <laughs> the emphasis. He's queer as folk, as Ron Paul puts it. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming out. <laughs> I'm transracial. Well, I'm, I'm going back a white in now. man crept in a yeah. nigga's body. <laughs> <laughs> so how does that even happen? Well, Rachel Dolezal, she she paved the way for a lot of stuff. <laughs> she did. Trendsetter. Did you, did you watch that? The documentary, the Rachel Dolezal documentary. Oh man, I got to catch that one. <laughs> <laughs> you, how, <laughs> one beer, by the way. Put it guys, on your one beer. Yeah. I, my eyes are up here. They're looking yeah. down at the camera. Like, hey. Uh -huh. <laughs> Like Dustin Hoffman and Hook with the clocks. They're like, ugh. I can't handle it. So National Coming Out Day was trending everywhere. And yeah. to celebrate, of course, Facebook unveiled a new coming out feature. Coming out feature, I think it was a came out feature. It was yeah. hard to retell from the headline. So let me read exactly. This comes from MDC. For the LGBTQ community, Facebook is a way for you to come out. Oh, good. Visibility is so important because it changes hearts and minds about being LGBTQ when friends and family see us living our true selves. So actually, here's a look at uh, one of the coming out features, their, uh, their emoji, okay. which makes yeah. sense. But Facebook went a step further in an ill-advised spirit of balanced, uh, unfortunately, simultaneously unveiling the drag them behind a truck feature, which was not received okay. very well. Oh, uh, dear God. Yeah. That was, <laughs> oh. By the way, just for, so, you know, we obviously we use it as a joke because, you know, why not? But uh, it's only happened a handful of times, gay people being dragged behind a truck. When people yeah. talk about hangings, lynchings, those, yeah. those happened all the time. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. The gays behind a truck, it was like twice. Yeah. It was like an A&M in one other time. In the one, it was just a gay guy roller. It was a fishtailing accident. <laughs> How did this turn into a hate crime? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know she was lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> Just trying to have fun. That was it. Was it was an accident. Now the it happened twice. The other time it was pretty homophobic. Yeah. They knew what yeah, they were doing. Was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there were no rollerblades involved. Burning hell. <laughs> <laughs> A time to kill. <laughs> oh, geez. Jeez, that, that movie is rough. Free Carly. Oh, Free, Free Carly. What? Free Carly. A time to kill. <laughs> They're with me. You're not with you us. You just literally picked up on the one thing where you could have an excuse to do a black voice with black people in the studio. Was that black voice? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
That's what happened. Did you see that? He was like, free Cardi. Free Cardi. I was doing it like a mob chant. Good Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this is why good. black people like, don't become Republican. Yeah. It's not because of the ideas. It's because people like you are like, hey, listen, Hodge twins. I'm so glad to see some black twins tell the truth for once. <laughs> We're going to go have a beer after I mean this and you're not a, invited. I mean that in a good way. You can't, not unless no, you, you want them vomiting in the kitchen sink. You're going to have a 40 is what you want to say. No, I said a beer. Hey, oh, I, don't th I don't think you'd be capable of a 40. Yeah, I don't think so neither. 40s are banned. You know why? They were used as weapons. What? Did you know that? Yeah. girthy. Yeah, we were trying to get a 40 at one point. Like, this was in Missouri anyways. And they, the, the, the clerk said, no, they're banned because people would take them, drink them, and then break them and stab the next guy for the rest of his 40. Yeah, blame the black people. That's the black people started that. <laughs> hold on a second. I didn't yeah, mention, see? See? No, hold on. They copy-paste. That, that's racist. what we call projecting, because I didn't say black anything. <laughs> I did. You did. <laughs> you did. Get him. Only black people drink 40s. <laughs> Well, because there was an ad once with Billy D. Williams. You guys need to, you know, what are you? You caught and chaffed Billy D. Williams. What's happening? Coat 45. Does it every time? <laughs> like you ever see those commercials? 45. Coat 45. Yeah. Nice you just did it again. I did Chris Rock. Wasn't it? No, not Rock. Uh, what's his name? Now what's he's just name? picking random black guys. Oh, black. Oh, 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 what's his name? Billy D. Williams. Chris Rock. Uh, Martin Luther King. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was in a movie. They all look alike. I like Denzel Washington. He's a good actor. Isn't he, boys? <laughs> Jeez. I'm uncomfortable. For you. You, get, uh, you, I think you doth protest too much. Uh, finally, and we have another story to get to before we get to the leftist mob. In uh, oh, yeah. this never happens news, five girls falsely accused a man of uh, oh. sexual assault. Boy, really, just because they didn't like him. Never. Yeah. What? Well, yeah. The, the, the <laughs> actual story: the boy's parents say he was forced to endure the loss of his liberty and other damages until several of the girls reluctantly admitted that their accusations were false. They're now suing uh, the girls in the school district. This and this is the problem with the Me Too movement. This is what we were talking. Yeah, we've been exactly. talking about this entire time when people say you're a guy, you have no idea, you have nothing to fear. There is plenty to fear because of exactly this. And if the girls hadn't admitted it, they probably wouldn't have caught them. It's become the modern day equivalent of lynching. And it's, in some cases, it's just an actual one. Now, are you ready, Mr. Coffee? Can you leave the light on, boss? I get a little scared being falsely accused of rape in the dark sometimes. Boss man, can you tell that nigga the wet sponge? <laughs> I don't know. I'm watching both of you. One of you finds it hilarious, and one of you is like, <laughs> <laughs> We made some mistakes. <laughs> How many beers do we have? <laughs> man, why was your lips so pink? I don't know. I told him that lipstick wasn't necessary. <laughs> <laughs> what I love is that there are two black people I know oh of gosh. in human history to go in blackface. One was the aforementioned Drake. Yeah. But he did it as a statement. You just did it for funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was tastefully done. You wasn't oh, pitch black. Yeah. <laughs> you wasn't close. Smut face. <laughs> Jeez. Close. So close. Oh my god. Seriously, what do you think? Do you think black people care if you're like you're black? You think oh, black? you went in darker than you really are. Oh, I'm definitely getting a coon into you, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Crucified. <laughs> Oh my Hanging gosh, on the cross. <laughs> Excommunicated for sure. Well, you yeah. know, if you had second thoughts, you only had 45 minutes while they applied the makeup. Yeah. Apparently yeah. someone yeah, needs to get smoking on. I still have it on my hand. I, I was yeah. drugged. I didn't do it. <laughs> What's that movie um, that the actor did? Um, he, was, he did Black Oh, Tropic Thunder. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. That was yeah, Robert funny. He should have got a Cameron Award for that. <laughs> yeah. I saw it with a black girl, an Ethiopian girl, and yeah. she, I remember she thought it was hysterical. It yeah. was. I thought it was very much certain. He looked like daddy. <laughs> well, I, you know what's funny? I remember going home with her yeah. and uh, whoa, whoa. no, 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 with her pa her, whoa, her family. This is her family okay. in LA. You know this girl. This, I this know, is a girl I who <laughs> make out raped me. Uh, I was like, it's a long story. You minorities. Point you, is, you I, poor thing. Yeah, <laughs> it feels so bad. I was for trying. I was trying to exhibit self control at yeah. that period of my life mm -hmm. because it was difficult, and, I, and it's just. And then she was just like, ah, and I was like, oh, okay, Rosario Dawson, look alike. I hate this. That jungle fever. Uh, I just. I don't know what that even means. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, Cultural differences. <laughs> See? Cultural differences. And he points to I, me. No, right? yeah, I do point to you because I'm not the one going like, hey, boys, you want a, y'all want a 40? <laughs> See? That's what he's doing. Gosh. I would never say it like that. His, so show, prep, <laughs> his show prep was wearing extra wide suits watching Kings of Comedy. That's what we call the prep for today's show. That's Steve Harvey. So I remember I went, she went home with me. Uh, with I went home with her family. I know this is going to be taken. I went home. Her wow. mom was there at that point dropping her off and her sisters and her dad. And she said, this is a movie that we saw. And her mom said, isn't that the movie was? She didn't. She didn't have it all. Uh, a black yeah. She was Ethiopian. It sounded. I don't. I, I couldn't even describe the accent. Uh, but not what we would picture as black. And she said, "Isn't that the one with 
the guy went in blackface? Like she was maybe kind of offended. And then the girl who I went with said, no, no, mom, it was just, it, that was the whole joke. Was, yeah. it was a, and, and she said, oh, 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 and she laughed. Then and that it was, was fine. It. Like it was explained to her by her daughter, and that was it. Wait, people get mad about this? Apparently, well, Why? yeah. They, oh, you ever, see, you, have you ever seen when they, uh, they censored on, on, on air? No. No. You know what's funny? I heard it was a backlash from it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not only do they try and track blur his face, but that doesn't work. They actually <laughs> <laughs> never go, never go full retard. They change. Oh yeah, like, they change that. Never go full stupid. <laughs> it's one of those right. things. It doesn't make oh, any yeah. sense. Exactly. Yeah. I missed that one. The worst one is uh, uh, Sam Jackson on the snakes in a plane. It's like I am tired of these mother flipping snakes on this twisted, no, 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 no. tied up plane. No, the, the worst one is UPK eight, Mister Falcon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is not awesome. really fair because. Because then a kid is not going to know what the actual word means. No, no, he's going to call true. someone Mr. Falcon and, and get in trouble. Or he's going to be like on his honeymoon, like I'm, I'm falconing. Really, you know, <laughs> we're going to go, Falcon we're going to go to Falcon Town. Uh, so let's get to the, <laughs> let's get to the, uh, the, 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 the sort of important topic of the dive in. I guess people are calling it dive in now. Is what the, they call these sort of topics where mm-hmm. you explore them. All. So during the Kavanaugh hearings. Obviously, Democrats, they, uh, for those who don't know, docs, senators, sent, yeah. they, they sent rice and boy yeah. to the Pentagon. Yeah. Uh, white extreme. powder to Ted Cruz's <laughs> office. Yeah. Angry, of course, angry mobs into congressional offices. And by the way, wow. don't forget the absolutely insane mobs. We're not supposed to use this word trying to break down the Supreme Court doors. <laughs> To do something. Physical. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, they planned ahead. They're like, okay, listen, we have if if this guy gets confirmed, we've got option A or option B because we need several months to muster the vigor. Yeah. We need a little protein. We need to get some protein in our diets at the gym. <laughs> they're just like they're simultaneously force feeding spirulina. Like, ah, 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 right? Is there B12 in this? Their hands are. No. Bouncing off the door when it's they hit B12 it. It's a B12 analog. It's not real. Uh, <laughs> it did look like real bad actors to me. <laughs> when you say false flag, so um, good news. I think here is that uh, I think I, ho- I hope this, and I wonder what you guys think. What it, you know, the GOP hopefully learned that it's it, it's futile. It's it's futile to try and appease yes. crocodiles. That's what I've been talking yeah. about a lot. I don't agree yeah. with this idea of unity of kumbaya of holding hands with right. people who you can't. A good example. Uh, when people talk about Kavanaugh, some people said he should step down. You know, he should he should step down if confirmed right. because uh, it maybe it could be a great time for healing. And you know, w- would you want to heal with the person who just accused you of rape? Right. Let alone the person who accused you of gang rape. No. Right. Or the person who sent white powder to your office. Where do you find common? Or ricin? <laughs> that's where I draw the line between rape and gang rape. Yes. <laughs> that's where you draw the line? That's where I draw the line. Hard line. <laughs> Too much. Hard, Hard pass. Yeah. Should, should be drawn probably before we get, <laughs> probably before we get yeah. to the arcade machine. A little, little before that's that. That's probably that, yeah, <laughs> what? you jump the shark. Uh, yeah. Hopefully the GOP, and you let me know what you think they've learned. I mean, look, even, even Lindsey Graham grew a fuzzy pair. If you don't like me working with President Trump to make the world a better place, I don't give a Oh, yeah. dang. Yeah. He's got grown up language. Yeah. He got some someone, someone, get, someone, someone get him to coach Drake. <laughs> <laughs> that dude's a savvy. Oh, my gosh. Lindsey Graham? Yeah. Golden Graham? A lot of people are calling him 2.0 2. Hey, now, Graham 2.0, because they're like, hey, where'd, hey, where'd you find that package? You know? It's, but the thing is, it's, it's actually GOP 2.0, I think. Yeah, it really is. Hopefully, they lo- don't appease. And if you're going to be unified, <laughs> be unified in politically resisting the left. Yeah, they have, they have, how can you possibly unify with somebody who has no intention of compromising with you whatsoever, exactly. right? They find, the GOP, I think what Lindsey Graham has tapped into is that people get frustrated and they want you to stand for principle and right. show yes. some balls. Yes. And he did, and people yeah. are like, finally, Well, you know, even you. removing this yeah. idea of standing for principle, let's even remove that idea. They just want a man to show some balls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not true. in a park, not with a trench coat. They want you to show <laughs> the skill, oh. yes. the skill yeah. of exhibiting ball-like behavior. I'm, yes. I'm glad you delineated between yes. the two, because I was about to head out. <laughs> Mine are no, you weren't. No, you weren't. They're not even symmetrical. Um, so here's the thing. I think, you know, we've, we've covered leftist violence before. I think you were on the show. Every time someone's on the show, there's some sort of outburst of leftist violence. I know, it's hard to narrow down. So. The, the difference is that the, the left is now embracing it. And this is where I think it changes. I don't yeah. think there's any, there's no virtue in finding common ground with people who are endorsing and embracing mob rule. Democrats lost, and so now they're choosing to stir the pot and to get people to do what you just saw. If, if, you, yeah. if you think, by the way, it's just happening randomly, okay, let's go to, let's go through a timeline. Endorsement number one, it came a little while ago from Maxine Waters. Sorry about this. If you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome. Okay. Oh, uh, she could be wow. the grand wizard of the new KKK. It's like <laughs> the reverse KKK. Is she like, like your Hillary Clinton? Or does no one really think about her? What was that? One beer. <laughs> One beer. 
And it wasn't even called 45. I think no. it was fat tire. <laughs> it was like, this is white, this is white person beer. Right? I'm like, it's 5%. Every oh. time I see her, I think of James Brown for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's her stuff. I, I think a little Richard, actually. <laughs> I That's actually it. was walk, driving oh. down the, the um, what's that place in L.A. Where you need to bring your mic closer to your face. I know you're drunk, but, you know, you get, we can't hear you. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Remember, remember we was driving down Skid Row? Yeah. Really? Saw and a couple I, of them. Saw a couple of cranies look uh. just like <laughs> <laughs> That wouldn't be a bad shtick, actually, Maxine Waters. Next time she's on stage, she go, can't go on. Can't go on. She'll put a cape on. She goes, ah, crazy shit. Yeah. <laughs> One of them looked at me, hey, hey, you want to get sucked off? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. That's a pertinent detail. Thank uh, you for sharing. All right. The way Jesus you Christ, that, have some respect. The way you made that face, you look like one of those shrunken heads. You know, mm. I, I don't know what you're saying. That's an older clip. Maybe she's just senile, vaccine waters. And, okay, granted. At least that. But what about what about uh, photo negative Ned Flanders? Let's see what Eric Holder has to say. But Michelle says that, you know, when they go low, we go high. No. No. When they go low, we kick them. <laughs> Listen to the clap. Listen to the audience there. So they a couple it. things that are really telling. First off is the audience clapping, right? That was, yeah, uh, that yeah. was Shirley. Uh, it was Sherrod. Remember when, um, when Andrew Breitbart talked about the NAACP and she talked about how she didn't help the white farmer. Everyone right, got right. at him for selectively editing it because later on down the line she said, no, 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 I learned that I shouldn't be racist. But right. the thing is the NAACP crowd clapped 10 minutes before that. They just heard racist stuff. They're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> a couple of things there. First off, the audience <laughs> is clapping. Secondly, right. uh, Eric Holder sounds remarkably like every single black comedian's white guy voice. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like when Richard Pryor would be like, oh, when they go low, we kick them harder. Yeah. <laughs> that used to be what you get made fun of in the movies. <laughs> the banana and the tailpipe trick, but right? Then he, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> then he specifically used the Michelle Obama. Just so you know, that's from her statement, right? When they go low, we go high. He, he used her statement for a 180, saying, no, this is, de and he defines the new Democratic Party. He wants you to know, don't go high. Kick them harder, but not not above shin height because I can't <laughs> yeah. kick that high because exactly. I haven't done my I haven't done my yoga. <laughs> <laughs> We're completely out of ideas. The ideas that we have right now are completely bankrupt, and so we have to have mob rule. That's the new Democratic Party. Right, right? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did it, was it the lighting, or does he have like three mustaches on his face? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here, here, he has two here. mustaches. Come on. That's then there racist. is something else that crawled up there. We haven't he, figured it he out. He looks yet. like a light skinned walrus. <laughs> It lost a lot of weight. <laughs> this yeah, has devolved yeah. into ad hominem. He's cut. Which I find bit. both offensive and unnecessary. And here's what I know people are going to say. Well, what about Trump saying, ah, get him out of here. Back then we used to punch him in the face. Right? Okay, I understand. Donald Trump says stupid crap. He yes. said some stupid crap. But there is a huge difference between saying, get him out of here at a protester, at a rally, on your campaign trail, and the current Democratic leadership coordinating calls for harassment right. against Republicans right. across the board in public spaces. Before we move on, by the way, hit the notification bell because Apparently, subscriptions don't mean anything on YouTube. And uh, join Muck Club if you want the daily show every single day, 99 annually, 69 for students, veterans, active military. Rate us on iTunes, subscribe if you want to listen on the go, and I'm on Instagram at Louder with Crowder. Okay, you want to go to another endorsement? Look at that. That's ben? like, be eat your heart out, Ben Shapiro, nice just job. not on Saturday because you can't do manual labor. No. Hillary Clinton, endorsement number three. You cannot be civil with a political party that wants to destroy what you stand for, what you care about. That's why I believe if we are fortunate enough to win back the House and or the Senate, that's when civility can start again. You can't, you, first off, that's statement, <laughs> you cannot be civil with a party that, okay, you don't stand, you collapse. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> I, what do you, I love, I, see, this is what I like having here. Didn't you just, you just said, didn't she steal some money from Haiti? A whole bunch of money from Haiti. <laughs> hey, every time I see that woman, man, I get shrinkage. <laughs> oh, man. No, it's just called hiding. Well, that's a natural reaction. Look, they're, they're playing with fire here, though. Yeah. In the history of creating mobs, they tend to turn on everybody. So you have to be yeah. This is like, yeah. you know, if you're a, a, what is that? I think Cersei Lannister, when he, she created the sparrows. Um, and they yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I have you, a wife. You don't watch? You don't, you don't watch, watch the... the no, but when we said torch mobs, I was thinking, kill the yeah, beast! I think kill the beast! They're like, Gaston's a dick! And they Game, turn on him. Game of Thrones, <laughs> she creates this mob of people that end up yeah. turning on her, and she has to do that walk of shame down. Like, this is what's going to happen to the Dems. They're going to create this Antifa mob, and they're going to be like, all right, we're going to kick you out too, Dems. Sorry, <laughs> bye. Yeah. No. It's like two seconds intellect. from turning around. Yeah. Yeah, that intellect is not real. Uh, yeah, they can't no. help it. they got small brains, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's, this is, that, 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 that. All right, I'll allow it. Uh, <laughs> here's the, when people say, oh, it's, that's why I said both parties, man. There's not a single Republican group out there 
No. Calling for the pulling of pulling people out of their vehicles no. and beating no. them no. up. Did no. you see the Portland video? Yeah. Did you see this stuff? Crazy. They just grab an old man, pull him out of. The, do you have any idea what would happen if t if two white guys pulled an old black woman oh, or man. man out of a car oh, and beat him up? Oh my god! Oh man! Oh my god! And by the way, we would all be <laughs> rightfully pissed. It. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. white people don't really have a loyalty to white people. We're just like, wow, that guy's a dick. You know, yeah, exactly. we don't have that camaraderie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna go stand in an intersection and make cars turn right when they want to go straight. No, that's that's power to the people right there. I, you it, can't it, go it straight. Is absolutely, it, by the way, uh, here's a bonus. Okay, another media cover. The Democrats now they're endorsing mob rule, but CNN has said your mom's favorite network. Apparently, <laughs> we're not allowed to. Use, they actually refer to it as the M M, no. not uh, an M word. Seriously, what? I believe it's the overreaction of the left when you see people like Ted Cruz getting chased out of restaurants by a mob. Oh, when you see, you're when not you, going to use the mob I will, word. Oh, here. It's, it's totally a mob. It is without a there's doubt. I mean, it's, it's, there's no other word Matt. for it. Brooke Baldwin, by the way, she was also offended at the word Gosh. boobs. Remember that? <laughs> Guy said boobs. She's like, we don't allow that kind of talk on this All show. Right. You breasts. prefer tits. <laughs> boobs. <laughs> boobs are Fun like bags. a term that you use Fun for bags. kids. Like, yeah, it's like exactly. breasts or boobs. It's not even really a derogatory. Women say boobs. I don't think I've ever heard my wife refer to them as anything word, other than boobs. Breast is in the Bible. It's fine. Yeah, yeah but use that term. I don't think boobs are in the Bible. Oh. Well, it's not like in the true. song. No, but that's below that. I feel like that's like less Yeah. Offensive. You can't say titties anymore? <laughs> Not on Brooke Baldwin's <laughs> show. I can't believe she said that about mob. What, what's the offensive thing about I a know. mob? I mean, well, no, mob. Again, they don't want to say because now they're trying to say. Remember when they tried to say you're calling Barack Obama a socialist because he can't use the N word? Now they're saying, oh. well, you're calling them the M word because you didn't. Really? What? What do you? What? What would you call that? In front of the Supreme Court? Let's look at the definition of mob from yes, Merriam-Webster. Granted, you know, white supremacist conspiracy, but let's yeah, just go course. with it for this moment. <laughs> mob: a large and disorderly crowd of people, especially one bent on riotous or destructive action. Okay, hold on a second. Let's uh -huh. let's check back in to see what the uh, the alleged M word in question would fit this definition. <laughs> Yeah, that's a mob. It's, it's a vegan mob, but that it's a mob. Yeah, it's a week, <laughs> but it's a mob. That one seems pretty cut and dry. And this is this is really what, what, what bothers me. And I've seen some people on the right, and I, I don't want to... I never want to call anybody out who I think can do some some good and change some minds. But there have been some people who pe folks have been disappointed in. Yeah. Um, I'm waiting to see what transpires. But I have always disagreed with this idea of common ground. You've heard me say this. People come on the show, we'll match intensity. I believe in being civil with people. Right. But I don't believe in finding agreement on a lie. And we're at the point, I, there, I can have no unity with these people. What common ground are we going to have? And by the way, here's something more important. Whether you feel that way or not, some people are like, well, I want to find common ground. First off, I think you're a pansy. Secondly, ask any single member of special forces, police, ask any psychologist about the mob mentality and how to deal with it. All of them will tell you when there is a mob, there is something that happens psychologically. People cease to be yeah. individuals. It is its own functioning organism. Yeah, it is yeah. an amoeba that you cannot rationalize with. You have to get away. And we've seen this with Change My Mind. We've seen it where we've gone out, we've yes. had someone sit down, yep. we've had a conversation, and it's been and everyone else goes, oh, okay. But when one person sits down and starts yelling, you don't know who Brett Kavanaugh is, vagina, whatever Bring it is, then all of a sudden everyone starts yelling, yep. yeah, get off this campus, we hate you. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get stabbed by someone who doesn't even know how to handle a knife. Yeah. <laughs> People will do things in a mob they would never do as individuals. <laughs> yeah, ever. exactly. Because they're in a mob. That's why they're so dangerous, and we have to not let this happen. See, yeah. that's I learned that in a, in a kid's book. Sorry, we should, we've been saying that all the time. You guys call them gangs. <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's what's going on in Chicago. Yeah. It's a whole mob there now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the mob mentality. It, I mean, there's study after study after study that's been done on this. It's a horrible thing yes. to have, and yet they're pushing it. And this is what bothers me when people on the right try to say, well, let's find common ground. How? With a mob? Do, do me if, don't actually do this, but think of yourself in the middle of a mob, of an actual one. Think of yeah. yourself in the middle of, uh, think of yourself in the in your car, right? In your, in your Camry, when they open your door and drag you out and start beating you yeah. up. And think of yourself going like, hey, 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 where can we find common ground, guys? Yeah. Are you just the fringe? Who, get, who cares? Because the fringe that you see, endorsed by Hillary Clinton, Eric Holder, uh, Maxine Waters, they certainly yeah. haven't been disavowed by anyone. And by the way, no Republicans. And I'm, a, I'm not a Republican, but when we're talking about Republicans and Democrats here, no Republicans have done this. No conservatives are out there doing this. The left is doing this in shifts. 
<laughs> Let me see this really oak. Okay, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been uh, blocking this uh, this corner here for about four hours. Can you t can you take? It's like punching in the the, the sheep dog and the, the sheep in, in that Bugs Bunny. Like, all right, punch in, beat an innocent protester. Hope it's not Jocko driving up in the car. But <laughs> it is unbelievable to me, and I don't think there's anything. Uh, I don't think there's anything virtuous about finding common ground with them. I don't think there's anything practical about trying to find common ground with these people. And I don't think there's anything productive in trying to feign common ground with these people when you have every single member of the DNC who's in a position of authority endorsing them. When you try to say, well, hold on a second, you're endorsing the mob, they go, ah, whoa, 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 whoa. we're starting to throw the M word around a little flippantly here. <laughs> shut up, shut up. I've had, okay, we're gonna have a razor fist oh, on yeah, that yeah. break. And Hodge twins are, are, are great. As you can probably guess, Mr. Coffee here is most certainly going to fry. And that's only because we outlawed hanging but six years ago. But he'll still get to enjoy his last meal of his favorite chowder on this mug. Or from this mug. Lottowithcrowder.com slash mug club. He likes it for as much longer as he has. You know, that's a Jean-Luc Picard song, and I always wondered why he was having to tell everyone to cheer up. I don't know. Maybe it's, it's sad in space. Yeah. I think it's because LeVar Burton realized that he wasn't gay. Uh, our next guest, uh, re really happy to have him on the program. You know him uh, on the YouTube, the Rageaholic is the channel. You can follow him on the Twitter at yeah. Razor with a zero. Yes, I have to specify because he wants to make my job hard. Fist, uh, you know him, you love him. Mr. Fist, how are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, it's it's cool enough here that I can wear my leather regalia. There you I, I would have worn it last time, but you know it was monsoon, it was Phoenix, and I didn't feel like reverting back to a mm. liquid state. Do, do you mm. do you get recognized in the street if you're not wearing your leather jacket and gla or glasses? Oh yeah, I can I can go full normie. You'd be surprised. Really? Go, oh yeah, you'd be you'd be shocked at how normal I can look. See, I feel like I'd be able to pick you out more easily, even in costume at a furry convention, than without your garb. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. And since I can't really wear the leather most of the year, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I figured you just went with it. I thought it was a thing that you just committed. Well, I'm losing respect for you as we go on with the interview. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. I know you've, ta you've talked about this quite a bit. You and I obviously are in the same boat. We just talked about this with the Hodge twins. The, it's the M word now. This has been kind of what's been going on this week. The, 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 the Portland Antifa beating people out of their car. Um, what do you think about the current state of America? People are acting as though this is the first time we've been divided. I kind of, I kind of appreciate that just now we can see them for what they are. No, exactly. It's been, it's been the rule of the day since. I mean, it's hard to sell this on being Trump's fault when it was happening when Obama was president as well. This is true. But my favorite thing about it is, you know, they're trying to sell this glorified tism tantrum as like an act of insurgent heroism. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah I, I threw a jar of piss on a seventy-five-year-old man I mildly <laughs> disagree with politically. You know, I'm oh my, hero. my hunger strike is an act of protest. Meanwhile, she's like four hundred pounds, fully nude. Yes. Like, uh -huh. no, sweetie, if I need an act of <laughs> Heroism. I'll ask you to do a jumping jack. <laughs> Attic a chance there, Jemima the Hutt. Yeah, no, I. Well, listen, when you talk about as though it's this act of sort of heroism, you know, there are these insurgents. I mean, they see it that way because uh, they also see the Taliban, uh, Taliban is, is, is heroic insurgents. So this isn't that far of a stretch. Right. Speaking of the chance, by the way, can we maybe hit the uh, refresh button on those every 50 years or so? <laughs> like, this is supposed to be the party of elevated intellectuals, and the best they can come up with for the better part of a century is uh, hey, hey, and ho, ho. I know. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, okay, thank you. Someone else, I'm like, well, can you just create a rhyme at all? I mean, you know, you're supposed to be the party of hip, uh, now they've lost Kanye, but you've got all the other ones, right? You know, yeah. we'll let you keep right. Drake. Hey, hey. Yes, right. anything. I don't know. How about, here's something. How about, hey, hey, no, no. And then just like something you don't like, you know? <laughs> exactly. <Let's>, exactly. <laughs> it's a move. Either way, either way, hit that refresh button. Like this chant is old enough to remember Biden's first set of hair plugs. <laughs> like, and, and what part of protesting like five-year-olds got you Trump? Are they not understanding exactly? 
Well, that, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's a good point that you bring up. I know you said you have a, uh, we talked off here, a video, I think, on the sort of blue wave, as it's been described, uh, coming up. What's your thought on, on this right now? People are predicting potentially a blue wave. Um, obviously, like you said, this is the same behavior that got us Trump. And do you think that the sort of Kavanaugh, the post-Kavanaugh America, the Kavanaugh effect, as it were, uh, has affected the blue wave? Maybe, maybe he stunted it a little bit. That's the thing. I mean, it's it's folly to predict anything because anything could change any day if we've learned anything over the last two years. Right. <laughs> but if if the polls are any indication that Kavanaugh shit fit is going over like Hillary on a stairmaster, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not working out so well. Uh, cinema was leading uh, here in Arizona. Right. Kirsten Cinema was leading, and now she's behind by six after throwing in with the Kavanaugh guys. So it's not exactly, they're trying to sell this sort of Lord of the Rings fantasy of the blue wave, but here's the thing about the internet, it never forgets. And I was going back, like just out of curiosity, go back and read almost any article from before Donald Trump became president and the Democrats were absolutely apoplectic at the prospect of the 2018 midterms. Right. You know, like the math is the math. Republicans are only defending eight seats in the midterms. Democrats are defending nearly three times that, 25 seats. Yeah. And five of those are in blood red states with incumbents mm -hmm. who tied their political careers to the fortunes of the uh, USS Clindenburg. <laughs> uh, so that's I don't see how that's going to work out for them. Blue wave wise. Yeah. Well, and also 25 of those seats are, are also double seats because... Many of them are Democrats. Um, we talked about the Stairmaster. We're going back to fat jokes. I, you started. The, you, you opened this can. You wanted to play this game. I'm playing with you. Uh, <laughs> Mike, speaking of Hillary, I love you have Hillary out there yesterday saying uh, there will be no civility until she's back in power. <laughs> right. I mean, like, what, I mean, at what point do we just consider this a threat? It's like I will, I will be violent until I get what I want. Oh. Can we can we sell the locker up T-shirts now, or is that considered domestic terrorism? <laughs> no kidding, no kidding, no uh, no, sweetie. I think we call that a syntax discrepancy. Until you're in power, there can be no senility. Yes, That's how that works. <laughs> well, it's always I don't. It's always hard to know where she's coming from because they just keep stabbing her with a diazepam pen. She can't get a word <laughs> in edgewise. <Yes. laughs> did you see? Did you see the Secret Service propping that Sea uh, Hag up with rebar while she was having yet another hacking fit last weekend? Uh, yes. Like you. Can you s believe they sincerely tried to sell us on this woman being like a robust biological specimen <laughs> yeah. during the election? Remember it was in like, New yeah, York. They, they said, no, it was hot out today. We're like, well, okay, what about the other 364 days this year? <laughs> yeah. There's the, she's, she's shuffling around in her Chairman Mao moo moo, you know, hacking up <laughs> tires. There's a portrait of health. And, and like two years later, this drunken dingbat still hacking away like, you know, Doc Cabernet. Like, what do you even have? I, I, what does this woman have two years later? Like, disco fever didn't last this long. <laughs> and it's, it's just as it's just as toxic, I believe. No, I, I do. I, I don't know what. I remember they stabbed her with a diazepam pen, and everyone was like, "That's a conspiracy." Well, hold on, that's actually not really a conspiracy. And by the way, it's not like it wasn't even that subtle. Like, they were, I, I talked about this in the pitch meeting. They, they were stabbing her like uh, like Russell Crowe with that kind of tall guy with the weird teeth and three ten to Yuma. You know, they wake up and he's by the fireplace, just. <laughs> <laughs> he's just going into town and you're like, he's got the handcuffs on. How can he stab with such velocity? That's what they're doing with this lady. And this is, it is one thing though, for people to act this way, right? Like you said, under Obama, under, um, and even under Trump initially, but a lot of the Democrats themselves kind of tried to act like they weren't throwing their lot in with Antifa. Now they're just saying, yeah, yeah, they are. I mean, we just we just had uh, 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 Eric Holder talking about photo negative Ned Flanders. We just had him talking <laughs> about it. Maxine Waters, of course. We have uh, Hillary Clinton. I mean, is it Obama didn't do that? At least he hit it. Right. I mean, exactly. <laughs> that's the that's the thing. Although you do have to say, like. And he also displayed a little bit of shame too. Yeah. You know, like after the after the BLM stuff, it was so bad. Even Obama's hair didn't want to be black. <laughs> and and like, but Hillary's like, yeah, Antifa, we got a grassroots movement finally. <laughs> she's coming with she's coming in with a perm. Does this work? Is this still? I know the disco fever's gone, but I thought I had a pass with my viral. I um I don't um I don't like these people. <laughs> The Kavanaugh stuff, too, has kind of emboldened them because now they can make it about reproductive rights. Right. You know, like because, you know, now you got Pelosi flipping about uh, flipping out about Roe v. Wade and so forth. Like 
really Pelosi in authority? The last time this woman had a period, the word Cretaceous was in front of it. <laughs> Suddenly she's like the grand vizier of vaginas. Like, I don't know, take a long look at that facelift. Does that look like a person you'd like handling your medical care? No, no, I, I don't imagine. I don't even think I would, uh, I would let her handle, like, I wouldn't even let her watch my five-year-old on the weekend if she were my mother. <laughs> I wouldn't. Just, if only because it would scare the five-year-old. Even if she were really, really nice. Like, let's say she, on the inside she weren't Nancy Pelosi. Just because of the outside, I'd be like, you're scaring the kids, and I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Um, <laughs> so, sorry. You know, when they, when they go low, we go lower. I, I, this is the one thing, though, that I do think, <laughs> it, it, hopefully, hopefully, you know, I mean, Lin Lindsey Graham, he's sacked up. And I yeah. know, you know, you weren't a yeah. fan of John McCain. Uh, uh, I wasn't a huge fan of him either. Not a fan of, of, of Lindsey Graham, generally speaking. Mitch McConnell. Yeah. We're still trying to wonder if Mitch McConnell has like, if it's an, if he has no chin or if it's an optical illusion where he has <laughs> endless chins, you know? Yeah. But it's now I'm wondering this about their balls. I, I wonder what, do you think it's because, here's my read on it, okay? They knew Kavanaugh. There were so many background checks before he was obviously, you know, this is going to be a public affair. I think this guy is, was so spotless and so clean that they took this really personally because they knew uh, what was afoot. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think the reason it blew up on him was, you know, over a 40, 48 hour period, we basically went from he may have possibly held a girl down at a party 35 years ago to uh, he was the leader of a high school rape cult and he savaged this woman in full view of her family and friends. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I mean? It just, it lapsed into incredulity. Like, man, if, if only he'd left her at the bottom of a lake, <laughs> this entire controversy <laughs> could have been avoided. But I did like, I did, how'd you like Mitch McConnell going from Mr. Turtle to uh, Ninja Turtle? I, I know. I really, you know, I, I, I don't know where this came from. And I, I just think they probably took this really personally. You know, there were sort of, I, a, it's it's kind of like a, the Patriot, where they're starting to pick off generals and they're getting really like, these are not the rules of engagement. We must stand front line, center to center, and fire at each other, offering no territorial advantage. I'm like, well, I don't know why you did war like that. So I, I actually was a fan of the guerrilla warfare. But it seems at this point, like the Republicans are going, really? You're just, you're just not even, you're not even going to care that it's just completely fake. Like you're having Sweatnick come out saying he's a gang rapist. This is where we are now. <laughs> exactly. Although I would like at the outset, I'm from Arizona. I'd like to apologize on behalf of my entire state for Jeff Flake. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know, Crooked nose. I, I know you could, you could apologize for Trudeau, but we, we don't have all day. No, we do not have all day. I mean, it, <laughs> honestly, it's, it's, it's quicker just to put a pillow over his face. No, I don't mean kill him. I don't mean kill him because we're talking about Clinton. What I mean is just put a pillow over his face so we don't hear him. That's all. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. And if we don't hear him for ever more, so, so much the better. I, um, <laughs> things so, happen. Things, things happen. Ha that's all we're saying. Things happen. <laughs> Happen. Gosh, he's so embarrassing. <laughs> I'm so upset that you brought him up because I just, I just, we. This is the one show in a while we didn't have a Trudeau clip yeah. yet, and now it's still. It's like, it's like it's, it's like it's like grapefruit juice. You just can't get yeah. rid of it. It stays with you all day. Uh, so okay, so we can't predict it. But w w why? Why do you think everyone is talking about this this blue wave? And do you have you noticed a shift in in media the way they're covering it? At least going like, there's going to be a blue wave. To there, there, there could there could be. Maybe, possibly, yeah. it'll be the size of a Listerine cup. Right. No, yeah. uh, <laughs> Here's a guy beating up an old man in Portland. No, like, m my read on it is, if, if you look at the data in terms of how many seats are actually up and how much, like, here's the thing. If everything goes right for the Democrats, they actually get to keep the amount of influence they have now. Right. That's all that happens. Right. It's not like they can even really, mathematically speaking, storm the Bastille here, really. Right. So it's once you you accept that fact, you realize it's not so much that they're predicting a blue wave as they need a blue wave. Right. Because yeah. the other default position is they lose seats and probably <laughs> lots of them. Yeah. So it's it's hard to predict, but I would say probably okay, maybe one or two seats, but right. in the overall not a blue wave. Understand this though, no matter what happens, if one democrat wins, they'll call it a blue wave. Right. In the media. Right. If, oh, yeah. if even one wins. Yeah. Just like if they get if one Antifa gets one shot in on a 75-year-old in a Corolla. They're like, well, okay, we'll take the win. We'll take it where we can get it. Um, you're looking, uh, are, are you are you, uh, are you feeling all right? Are you tired? Uh, a little bit tired, but I'm all right. I just meant uh, you look tired from all that winning that's exactly. happening. So, uh, sorry. I winning. Walked, a dad joke walked in, but winning so much at Kanye. We ate tacos and watched uh, Netflix. 
channeling a little Norm Macdonald dad joke. There. A little, little, <laughs> a little Norm Macdonald, a little Owen Benjamin. We have all of this going on in this show, uh, and uh, and usually uh, people aren't happy with it. But you know what? Uh, we keep the lights on. All right, that is the Rageaholic on YouTube, which is different from your Twitter at Razorfist with a zero because yes. you're breaking all the rules when it comes all to branding. Or you want to ensure that people do not find you. Uh, when can people look for this video that you have though on the Blue Wave? Because your insight is That'll always apparent. That'll be dropping in the next week. We'll have a full-on Blu-ray Blue Wave analysis. I'll talk about some Waiting. of the things I mentioned here today, but go a little more in depth. Okay. So, yeah. Well, great. Well, listen, if uh, if, if uh, you want to come back and talk about it, uh, you're much more interested. Funny enough, in, I think people don't understand this about you because you know you look like a crazy person. You're very <laughs> you're very educated on on micro politics. You really are a political junkie. You know, I'm a, I'm a cultural guy, uh, so I always learn a lot listening to you. Even though I really just expect you to you know uh, recite Dio's Holy Diver or something. I'm like, well, wow, that was very <laughs> that was very sensible. All right, thank you, Mr. Fist. We always appreciate it. We must go, sir. <laughs> Godspeed, thanks for having me. Only you can prevent retro arcade machine sexual assault by joining at lottowithcrider.com slash mug club today. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mug club. All kinds of mug club. All right, okay. This could go off the rails really <laughs> quickly. But you guys, you guys have mugs. You guys have been around for a long time. And honestly, really, we, we, we do appreciate uh, yeah. having you around here. I know the first time you came around, you're like, well, we're not really conservative. And then you saw the mob on Instagram. You're like, well, I guess yeah. we're in it now. <laughs> You helped me come out of the closet. Well, I, if nothing else. But yeah. I do appreciate it. It's HodgeQuinnsTour.com, and, and really, um, we do want you to go out and support. They have some tour dates coming up. I know you have some in Texas. Uh, and, and what allows us to really actually kind of build a, a platform for people so that they can come out of the closet and, and not feel as though they're stepping into the abyss is Mug Club, because we know you've been completely demonetized from YouTube. Wonder what's going on there. Maybe, well, if Johnny Cochran was still alive, you might have had a case, but pretty much <laughs> better start doing those live shows. Lottowithcrowder.com slash Mug Club, 99 annually, uh, 69 if you're a student, veteran, active, military. You get the daily show, all of the CRTV lineup. And uh, listen, if you don't, if, if you don't like, you know, our main sponsor, of course, is Walther as well. That's another way to support the show. You need a firearm, uh, always say is try the Walther. We don't really do the whole like, oh, it's the best. In it. Listen, there are a lot of good firearms out there. Walther has the balls to sponsor the show. And I truly believe, just try it. Try try the Walther, see what happens. Nine <laughs> times out of ten, you'll buy it. Uh, and with Mug Club, it's like an 8.4. Yeah. But that's good. Yeah. Plus. It looks good. No one here is really a mathematician, so I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> A basket. That's called the why did I jump in? I, I don't know how to swim dance. Happened to me when I was young. Yeah. Jumped into the water, realized I didn't know how to swim. Happened to me too. Really? My grandpa jumped in, full clothes and everything. But wait, but you said it happened to you. No, it happened to me. My grandpa jumped in to save me. Oh, I was like, okay. <laughs> difference is you were 16. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, I remember my dad was swimming underwater in the breath, and he looked like a manta ray. And I had seen someone riding a man, like at SeaWorld, so I thought, oh, I'll jump on him. And I remember, oh, I I, that, first yeah. off, he was he was gone by the time I got into the water, so I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't jump on him. And then I just remembered going, I can't. Uh, this, is, I, this is not something I can do. I can't do this thing. <laughs> Almost died. Wasn't as bad as the time in the kayak, though. I've told that story for reference. See the archives. Thanks so much to the Hot Twins. Yeah, HotTwinsTour.com. Uh, of course, Razor Fist. Next week, I know we've got a, a crazy show. We have we have Ben Shapiro in for Devil's Ooh. Advocate Ooh. with uh, Skylar Churton. They'll be debating uh, the merits and benefits Bring of socialism. And uh, I think we're going to have Jordan Peterson on soon. Um, Daniel Cormier, I know. Dean Cain. It's a, it's a yeah. good time. It's an exciting time. It's a list. It's a, it's a, it's a good, good time. And please do go and support the Hot Twins. Um, they're, they're, they, they are kind of, you know, they're being a little nonchalant about it. But the truth is, anytime you step out, they were fitness guys. They yeah. were, they were, um, 
they were, uh, I guess, I don't even know, kind of lifestyle, I guess what you call it, because it wasn't just fitness, they did diet, yeah, fitness, that kind of thing, and then it was also was comedy mixed in, people realized they were really funny, so then they started doing comedy, um, but I always suspected that they were more right-leaning. I remember you, the first time they were on the show, I'm like, listen, you don't have to say anything you're uncomfortable with. We always do that with a lot of these guests. Sometimes there are guests in the show where we don't even touch on politics, but uh, more often than not, not always, if they're willing to appear on the show, you can take a wild guess. So uh, I always thought, well, they're, they're former military, they're entrepreneurs, uh, family guys, if you look at them, uh, you look at, uh, you know, they have wives, kids, good, good, good stand-up guys, actually. They're surprised, very gentlemanly, too, actually, around, uh, around women. Very much will surprise you. Uh, nice when they're on my mom, I'm like, yes, yes, yes ma'am, no ma'am. Um, I don't say I should. Well, yeah, you know what? It is surprising. But I always thought, okay, they're probably more right-leaning than they maybe even necessarily think. And what transpired was they, they, they visited us on the show, and then some people just started hating it for no other reason. The first interview wasn't political at all. They took a risk, and then they saw what happened. It was kind of the, all right, okay, screw you. And that's exactly what, that's what we were talking about earlier, right? We were talking about mob rule earlier. That's what happens. That's the rebound reaction. The mob rule is not the rebound reaction. That's human nature. I hear a lot of people asking this right now, like, how do we, how do we get here? How, do we, how have we done so far? No, we've always been here in some way. Sometimes it's just a little more apparent than others. The rebound reaction is not mob rule. That's human baseline because human beings are crappy, okay? The rebound effect is the Hodge twins, when they appear on this show, it's, entire, it's entirely benign, and people say, you must be racists now. The rebound is, okay, screw you. Now we're just going to actually look into this conservatism thing and become fans, and that's why I say you support them. But let me tell you, okay, let's get to human nature here for a little bit before we get back to mob rule. They took a risk and they appeared in the show. They, they've taken a lot of risks, if you look at them starting their own YouTube channel, starting their own clothing line. Um, I respect that a lot. There are primarily two kinds of people in the world. Risk takers, and a lot of people are gonna like this, there are the risk takers and the beneficiaries. Now here's the thing, people who are willing to take risks don't begrudge those who don't. They don't have a problem with people who don't take risks. The problem arises when the beneficiaries feel as entitled to the spoils of the risk as the person who took the risk in the first place. That's where we find ourselves right now. That's when you get mob rule. When the unemployed Antifa activist in Portland feels just as entitled to that old man's stuff in the car and even, even entitled to his time, even though the old man is actually spending that time traveling to where he can work to create more stuff. And the person dragging him out, punching him, feels just as entitled to it. Not everyone, not everyone who's on the left, but let me tell you something. If you're a socialist, you're probably an entitled person. Not everyone in the Democratic Party, but everyone who's like, oh, maybe Democratic, social, entitled. I don't like you. That's okay. Right, listen, I, I will tell you this. I shouldn't say that I don't like you as far as to your soul as a person, to your core, but they probably don't want to have dinner conversation with you. There's no common ground. I'm a Democrat. You're any kind of socialist, you're entitled. It means you feel as entitled to the guy in the car as the, just as the person outside of that car dragging him out and beating him up. There, here's something else to, also, I don't want this to be misconstrued. There are hard workers, okay? There are hard workers, there are risk takers. They aren't necessarily one and the same. You can be a hard worker, you can be disciplined, you can be diligent, but not someone willing to incur the ultimate risk. So it's not an insult. Middle management, higher positions of employment, but not business owners are filled to the brim with these people. And there can be risk takers who aren't necessarily hard workers. Or typically all these people like loose cannons, kind of guy or girl you know, right, think who takes needless risks without a follow through, without a plan, and so they end up hurting themselves. Right, this idea that life should be comfortable or easy is very new. It's very new. In the realm of human history, that's a very new idea. Uh, you know, to speaking about kind of risk takers, a good example, at one point, I, as I've discussed with him, Owen Benjamin would take some needless risks, be out there like, oh, and you don't need to be doing that, for example. But I, I've always been kind of envious of Owen. If you see him on stage, he goes into jazz mode and he just tries new, like he will do two hours and keep going and just try new stuff and doesn't care if it works or not. And then all of a sudden the room will, sh the floorboards will shake with laughter because he's taking risk after risk after risk after risk. And I, I haven't been, you know, I, I do some of that in comedy, but typically speaking, I, I, I like to be prepared and, and I'm a little meticulous if I'm doing stand-up in the last few years, and often that's because there's a camera always on. Owen doesn't care. He's willing to take that risk, and because of that, if you see when Owen, once he has his set, once he goes, okay, I'm no longer experimenting, but this is my, he kills. He's a crusher because he's willing to take that risk. We all benefit from it. Think of Thomas Edison, George Washington. We, we all benefit from risk takers. Swimming across the body of water to where no man has gone before, okay? Think of that concept. A man swims across, you have no idea what's there at that point, and you find paradise. 
But then, the people who never made the journey, who saw that same, they looked out into that same nothingness, into the mist, and they demand that you trek back for them because they feel just as entitled to the new paradise found. And guess what? The risk takers don't want to give them a free ride. And the truth is, you have to safeguard your soul. You have to safeguard your soul against us because human, human nature, we've talked about this, empathy is not envy, human nature is envy. Human nature is to want what other people have, whether you've earned it or not. Sorry guys, I'm getting to my soapbox. I know there's not a whole lot funnier. I'm pissed. When I see someone getting dragged from a car and beaten up and someone's like, don't use the M word. I want to be, I fa you know, have you ever daydream about beating up the bully as a kid? I'm not going to lie. I daydream about being that old man in the car sometimes. Mutual combat state. It pisses me off, and it pisses me off when people try to go, gee golly, I'm gonna quote a Bible verse and I'm gonna be a nice guy and act as a, oh, we're, we're, let, let, let's find common ground, Mr. Beating me out of my, out of my Lexus. You think, here's what, you, you think people at the top haven't figured this out, that human nature is to be envious? When you're young and you're stupid, you blame just the advertisers and the corporations, man, who, and it's true, they work with the advertisers, and by the way, something else to include, politicians. Because what are most politicians doing? They're just advertising ideas, or in today's instance of the Democratic Party, lack of them. That's why I am honestly, I'm consistently amazed that Republicans or conservatives ever win at all. Ever. Because the left agenda, the, the, the Bernies, the Nina Pinta, Santa Maria Cortez of the world, <laughs> what Hillary Clinton just said about the reckless mobs encouraging it, that's the easiest sell in the world. I'm shocked when a Republican wins. I'm shocked when any candidate, when a Ted Cruz type person wins, when someone wins by saying, ah, you know what, I'm gonna do less. Because I, I want you to trust in yourself. The, the whole kind of, you know, the left mocks the, oh, picking yourself up by your bootstraps, because it's an easy mock. Because most people wanna, wanna make an excuse, right? It's, it's an easy sell to say, no, 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 it's not your fault. It's the easiest sell in the world, socialism. Don't believe me, do this mental exercise, okay? Have you ever had a time where, I don't know, pick something right now that you're really, self, you're really self conscious about. Pick something maybe at some point in time. You probably actually have a memory of this specifically. You stepped out kind of in faith and you asked maybe like your wife or a loved one or a family member about this thing. You know, kind of asked for their feedback. But rather than regurgitate exactly what you wanted to hear and some kind of attempt to build up your self esteem, they told you the truth. You ever have that happen and get pissed? I know I have. One example, oh no, you can, you can barely see that zit. Were the words I were expecting to hear before graduation? Not what, did you fall off your bike? But one was truthful. That's why the current leftist agenda is the easiest sell in the world. Every time someone asks whether they're deserving of something or not, the answer is yes, of course. It's, am, I des am I deserving of this man's income? Yeah, of course you are. Am I deserving, even though I don't work, am I deserving? Yeah, of course you're deserving of all of it. You need to safeguard your soul against that because that's the easiest sell in the world and that's what they're selling right now. There's nothing sweeter on the surface than hearing exactly what you were hoping to hear, but that's not helpful. We see what happens with those people. We see what happens with those kids. The kids who never get the red pen. The kids who are told they're wonderful and pink sings to them, telling them they're perfect the way they are. They, they, they become Portland Antifa. You know, the world has two kinds of people. This is a big reason for being where we are. There are risk takers and then there are the beneficiaries. And a big part of this current conflict is people refusing to do what you'll need to do yourself. Do it this week, do it this weekend. And by the way, if you, those in charge they're playing on the string that don't, most of you don't do it superbly. They're hoping that you don't. So what is it that you need to do? They need to look yourself in the mirror, take your iPhone, put it in selfie mode, I don't care. If you're a Japanese tourist, that's probably what you're doing anyway, fine. Just don't do it by the fountain while I'm there with my wife. Look yourself in the mirror, grab your selfie phone, and honestly assess which kind of a person you are. Are you a risk taker or are you a beneficiary? Here's the good news. You can change it about yourself. You have, or you can accept it, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, either or, because either is okay, provided that you don't feel entitled to the spoils of the next guy without fulfilling his or her requirements. That's what, once you do that, when you look yourself in the mirror and you say, okay, you know what, I'm not a risk taker, but I feel like I deserve what the risk taker created. That's when we get to where we are. That's when it becomes mob rule. How did it get this bad? What do you mean, how did it get this bad? 
Think of your own quiet, think of who you are. Think of your quiet thoughts, when nobody's watching, when you can get away, think of when you were a kid and you could get away with stuff, when you could take things that you didn't deserve, when you could take credit that you hadn't earned. Most people, we've all, how do we get this far? We've always been here, because human beings are flawed. Safeguard your soul at least against the people in power playing on that, and you know what? Don't try and find common ground with them. You don't have to, you can be nice, but you can also point out that they're full of crap. That's how we're here with Mob Rule. We've always been here. We've just encouraged it. See you next week.